Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of In the Word. Um, today, I wanted to talk uh, a little bit about forgiveness. And um, this particular topic is inspired by, um, you know, some of the events that we've seen in our country. If you live in the United States of America uh, recently, uh, many of us have heard about the uh, Botham gene and Amber Geiger uh, trial. Um, if you don't know much about it, basically, you know, just really quickly, just to give you a little quick out, um, outline of the story. Um, basically, she went into his apartment, you know, she claimed that she, uh, you know, thought it was her apartment. And when she went into the apartment and saw him in the apartment, she being that she thought it was her apartment and didn't realize she was in the wrong apartment, she, she shot and killed this young man. So basically there was a trial, um, you know, uh, they charged her, you know, basically for the crime of killing him. Um, there was a trial and um, she was found guilty um, and she was sentenced to 10 years. But uh, what kind of sparked a huge uh, discussion about it was uh, what his brother Brant Jean uh, did in the courtroom. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, some of the things that he did in the courtroom, it kind of for some, you know, it was encouraging for some. Um, it sparked some outrage for some. It sparked some questions, um, and it just dealt with him forgiving her um, when it comes to the whole situation. So I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, wanted to share a few scriptures about forgiveness and what the Bible says about forgiveness, and you know maybe this can you know uh, once again bring some light to the situation or maybe confirm some things that you may have felt about this situation. But uh, the first scripture we're going to be coming out of is Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 and 15 and they read as follows. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The word trespasses there means to go beyond the limits of what is right or moral, to do wrong, to transgress. The word transgress is to break a law or command to sin. So when somebody has sinned against us or went beyond the limits or what is right and what is moral, you know, the Bible says that um, if we forgive them of this, um, you know, that the Father will also forgive us of our trespasses. Uh, Mark 11, 24 through 26 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have aught against any. So it says, and when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. And we know what the word trespasses mean, but the word ought there where it says, if you have aught against any means, if you have charge against any, an accusations uh, against any, a complaint against any, a gripe or an indictment. It says, listen, you know, why? you're praying to forgive that individual. Another scripture uh, that came to mind was Acts uh, 7, 59 through 60. This is when um, Stephen was being stoned for preaching the gospel. It says, and they stoned Stephen and he's calling upon God saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. In other words, Lord, forgive them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And I think that's a great example of something being done to you wrongfully and forgiving um, individuals or an individual. Romans 12, 19 through 21 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in doing so, uh, for in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So God says, listen, when some, uh, when your enemy has done something wrong to you, and in this particular situation, this young lady is definitely considered an enemy by many, and she may have been considered or is considered an enemy um, to this young man's family. But it says, listen, you know, if your enemy hunger, it says, feed them. If they thirst, you know, give them drink. Why? Because he says, listen, it's going to bring such a crazy conviction to them. And not only that, vengeance is mine. Listen, who better to repay um, 
repay somebody back for for a wrongdoing than God. Because a lot of times there are certain things that we can do to them, whether it's hurt them, throw them in jail or this and that. But at the end of the day, you know, the way God deals with people, there's no way around that. You know what I mean? When God deals with you, you know, it's going to be pretty severe. So he says, listen, if something's been done wrongfully to you, especially being saved, listen, I'm going to take care of it. You do not have to take matters into your own hands. And I want to address the elephant that's probably in the room. And I want to be clear on where I stand on this point of things. Listen, I am a black man in the United States of America. I am 42 years old. I've lived in America all my life, born and raised. And yes, I I do believe there is a problem with people of my color uh, being killed and people not um, being held responsible for it. You know, a lot of cases we see that it's negligence. A lot of cases we see that it's ignorance. A lot of cases we see that it's hatred. Is that the case for every single shooting? No, not at all. But it's unfortunate that we can see these things with a plain view and, you know, our system in which we supposed to uh, have some type of trust in does not always hold these individuals accountable. So I want to be clear where I stand on on that, but I am a saved man and my trust is in God. So when I see these things, I try not to be moved by these things because I know at the end of the day, God is going to have the last say in all of this in spite of uh, what it is, you know, that I think or how I feel. I know that God is going to have the last say. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what we saw went on in the courtroom, you know, because I think this is where a lot of outrage was sparked a lot. You know, a lot of people felt uh, a type of way, you know, good and bad. And, um, you know, for those of you that didn't see it, I encourage you to go check out the video. And I mean, it's all over YouTube and stuff. I just finally seen it yesterday. But what I did was when I saw it, I wrote down, you know, pretty much the events of what happened in the courtroom. And that's what I wanted to talk about. And now this is Brant Jean, uh, Botham's brother, uh, addressing the defendant uh, from the stand. Listen to what he says. He says, I forgive you. This is, this is what he says when he starts to address. It. He says, I forgive you. I wasn't ever going to say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. And um, there was a lot of people that, um, you know, they felt a type of way about him even saying that, you know, he says, listen, I, I don't even want you to go to jail. He says, I want the best for you. Um, but he's going to clarify what the best is for. He says, because I know that's exactly what both them, which is his brother that was killed, will want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ, which all of us that are saved, we should definitely totally be in agreement with is the best thing for you to do on this earth. The number one thing for you to do on this earth uh, is to give Christ your life. Why? Because we are promised eternal life with him if we abide in him, if we continue in his word. He goes on to say, I love you as a person and I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if it's possible, but can I give her a hug, please? This is what he asked the judge. And the judge didn't answer right away. She didn't say anything. So when the judge didn't respond right away, he said, please again, in a little bit of a desperation. And when I saw that, you know, I started thinking that, man, maybe, you know, this was something that he really needed. You know, maybe this wasn't all just for her. Maybe this was also for him. Maybe this helped him um, heal in some type of way. Maybe this helped him, you know, release some anger. Maybe he felt once he gave her that hug, you know, some of the anger that he felt, maybe some of the guilt that he felt, whatever it is that he was feeling, maybe he felt like this was going to release that because we don't know how this young man felt. We don't know what he was capable of or what he was thinking about doing. All we kind of saw was the act that he did in the courtroom, but we don't know why he specifically did it. Obviously, we know he did it because he wanted to forgive her. He know that as a Christian, this is what we should be doing. But one thing I saw in that is if you listen to what I just read, he constantly said, I, he constantly said, I forgive you. You know, I want the best for you. He never said God told me or God said, he says, listen, this is what I want to do. And one thing I've always learned is the gift of choice is one of the greatest gifts of God. God gives us to choose right or wrong. He gives us the, 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 the gift to choose him or not choose him to make choices, whether bad or good. And to be clear, I'm not saying that this choice that he made was a wrong one or a bad one. I'm just saying that this was was his choice. And this was the choice that he made. He never laid it on God. He never gave her some type of prophecy from God. He said, listen, this is what I want to do. But what I thought was definitely, um, what I thought was, was, was really, 
um, awesome with some of the, the events that took place after the fact. Um, her lawyer said after after the uh, the trial was over or, or after that uh, day, he says the most this was the most amazing scene he had ever seen in the courtroom. Um, we know uh, if you followed it, the judge hugged his family and he she also hugged her. And in the process of talking to her, she gave uh, Amber Geiger a Bible and she said, "Listen, this is the Bible that I use every day." And she tells her, "Listen, this is your job for the next month. This is what you need to be doing for." the next month you need to be reading this bible you know what i'm saying and i want to share a little bit of my testimony about that because some may say listen you know how she gonna know what she's reading or you know that that's not gonna help her anyway listen some of you don't know my testimony but in my last bit of time in the street i had lost my mind i had started smoking angel dust i was selling drugs i was hustling but in my last year or two years i kind of bugged out man anybody that knows me personally they can tell you the story like i pretty much went crazy so the last time i was arrested and put in jail they took me from county jail and they put me into the mental ward uh at a place uh uh man what was the name of that place court uh oh man what was the name of it but it was one of the jails in connecticut they put me in um, it's been so long now uh, they put me in there and basically they put me down in the mental ward so I, I got there on a Friday and just to make the story uh, short I was there for seven days but in the midst of me being there now mind you I'm in the mental ward where people are screaming all night there's racial slurs being yelled there's people acting like they're the devil I mean this all it's just total darkness and mind you I'm still bugging within my mind my mind still isn't clear but something within me told me to ask the CO listen please do you have a Bible and you know for the CO to be able to walk right back to his desk and come with a Bible was was you know now when I look back at it it's like wow that was unusual for the CEO just to have Bibles you know under his desk so he gives me the Bible and guess what as I'm reading the Bible in there for those seven days I'm bugging so hard and still going through in my mind that I'm thinking the Bible is talking about me so I'm reading the Bible from a standpoint of as if Jesus is me, like it's talking about me and I'm in my mind, I'm thinking this is about to happen and that's about to happen. But something happened within me. And what that was, was even though I was bugging in that way, something within me started to encourage me to cry out to God. And I began to cry because I felt like they was going to kill me down there. They was giving me all types, well, trying to give me all types of medicine. And that's, that's a whole nother story for me to share another time, which by the grace of God, I didn't take any of it, you know, but they was trying to give me all types of medicine. You know, and I just prayed for God to get me out of there. And seven days later, on the next Friday, God sent somebody and they were able to get me out of there. And as I was coming out of the cell, clutching onto that Bible, there was another young man uh, uh, coming out of his cell. And he was clutching onto the Bible and he looked at me. He said, man, ain't it good to get out of here? I was like, yeah, this place is wild. It's crazy. It was just super dark down there. So, boom, we finally get up. You know, so he's going back into population at that particular jail. And now I'm on my way back to county jail. And guess what? Even though I didn't know what I was reading, by the grace of God, God helped me to cry out to him. That Sunday, when I got back to county jail, I gave Jesus my life. I gave my life to Christ at that Sunday service, and I've now been saved for 18 years. So I said all that to say, listen. Those of us may see her giving her this Bible and say, oh, that's not going to work or she didn't deserve it. Or whatever. Listen, we don't know what God is going to do. And listen, she may have went back to the cell and threw the Bible in the corner. That's her choice. But it's beautiful how things begin to play out as this this situation went on. Then the, then they said that after the sentencing, Botham's family attended a church service and they talked to the father after that service. And this is what he said. He said the moment in court touched him. He says, listen, he says that they've been taught to love, forgive, be merciful to others. He said, that's what we grew up learning in the church. You know, right. That's what we learn. He says, so that was inculcated in them. The word inculcated means instilled. So he was he was, you know, encouraged by what his son did. He, he wasn't necessarily upset because he was living out what he had learned, no matter if it seemed premature to the family or premature to those of us that are watching. He's basically he's like, yo, my son is living out what he's learned all these years. And that was his God given right to forgive her. And it wasn't bad in itself. It wasn't something that went against God's word. You know what I mean? So I wanted to just say all of that and also say that, you know, sometimes when we look at these situations, and we see somebody forgive somebody in that manner. And listen, this isn't the first time we've seen this. We've seen gang members, 
you know, kill people's families and their mother forgive the gang member, hug them and things of that nature. So this isn't something that, you know, um, we've, 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 we've seen it in all cultures, you know, whites forgiving whites, blacks forgiving whites, whites forgiving black. It's not, you know, it's not something that we've never seen before. Maybe we don't see enough of it, but it's not foreign. You know what I mean? So, but I think in this particular situation, because of the way it happened, because of the inconsistencies in this young lady's story, because of some of the things they found out about her life, you know, dealing with racism and racial slurs and some of the company that she kept, some people felt like, yo, that was just too pre mature and that's okay i think it's okay to say listen i couldn't have, i couldn't have forgave her that soon that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but i think we should say that instead of um saying you know instead of looking at this young man and trying to find something wrong with how he went about it he was able to do that that soon god bless him some of us may not have been and that's okay you know what i mean but eventually god wants us to forgive those that have trespassed against us and another thing and this is my last thing i'm going to say i think a lot of times we're outraged in these situations when these people because definitely she should have got more time 10 years is definitely not enough for something like that especially with the inconsistencies of some of the things that you know i hear them talking about that happened it, it definitely should have been some more time because we see people get life you know just for you know but this is what she was given she was given 10 years you know what i'm saying but prayerfully this young lady takes heed to what to everything that happened in that courtroom because to me it is God showing his mercy and his grace and his love not only to her but to the entire world it may have touched a husband that may have had an ought with his wife and, and needed to forgive her or vice versa or maybe some family members that's been bickering might have seen this and said dang if he could forgive her then I could forgive my family member for this little petty thing we going back and forth about this is what I'm saying this was I, I feel this was way bigger than what we saw on on camera and what we saw happen in that courtroom prayerfully this young lady takes heed to what happened prayerfully she goes back says what must i do to be saved Pray hopefully she's reading her bible right now but at the end of the day even if she is not god's will is still going to be done in this earth and in this situation and i think what it is is sometimes because we don't see people get dealt with right away or we don't see the system deal with them in the way that that they should or that we feel they should we still we we we, we lack the faith to say like live and those especially those of us that are saved i'm not talking to those that don't know christ but those of us that know that vengeance is the lord sometimes we forget that listen god could be we don't know what god is doing to this individual or to their family or whatever and that may sound harsh but we see that all through the bible when god avenges people you know god listen he does not play any games he doesn't play any games to the point where there's a scripture where God says, listen, when I deal with this individual and you see me dealing with them, I don't even want you laughing about it because it's going to cause me to stop dealing with them. Why? Because this isn't about you. This is my vengeance. I shall repay. This is what I think they should get. It's not necessarily just for you. This is because I am God and I know what they deserve. Listen, guys, know that I love you. Please don't forget to share this video with somebody. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, click the bell. Listen, I I just wanted to share my heart on this prayerfully this enlightened some of you guys prayerfully it encouraged some of you to guys not only um about this situation but to go forgive somebody your own self somebody that may have done something to you that you have been unable to let go for these last weeks or these last days these last months or these last years listen forgive them let it go because listen it releases a pressure off of you you know it doesn't only um forgive them or or does something on their behalf but it really does a lot even more on your behalf between you and God. Amen. So listen, guys, I love you guys until the next time. Shalom.